Hey everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to deploy your Django apps to Python Anywhere. So if you're not familiar with Python Anywhere, it is a service that allows you to upload your Django code and run your Django app from their servers. So it's like you're deploying your app somewhere and you can configure your own custom domain. You can use their subdomain if you'd like, but I think it's the easiest way to deploy a Python web app. So Django is the example I'll be using in this video, but this works for other web frameworks as well. And I think this is a good first choice before going to something that's more expensive or more complicated like AWS or Heroku. So let me get into showing you how to do it. So I'm going to use the app that I created a couple of videos ago, the to-do list app. And I have my GitHub page open here. So the first thing I'll need to do is move this code over to Python Anywhere. And here is the dashboard that they have. So this is what you'll see after you sign up and log in. I'll be using the free plan, so this won't cost any money, but I won't be able to use a custom domain for this. If you do pay and use a custom domain, it's very, very easy to set up. The docs are clear. You just wanna use something like Cloudflare for the domain, and then you can just add the C name record, and it will point your domain to your app on Python Anywhere. So to get started, the first thing I need to do is I'm going to open up a console. So on the left-hand side here, I just click on the new bash console and it's going to open up a console in my browser window. And once it does that, I will be able to pull my code from Git. So just waiting for it to load and all I'm going to do is do a Git clone. So let me just copy this URL. Git is pre-installed and it starts off in the home directory. So print working directory, I see home slash Anthony Herbert. This is a good location to put my project. So I will run git clone and then paste the URL by right clicking or control V. And it's going to clone into the Django to do app. So wherever your code is stored, you can clone it from this bash console here. And then once that is done, I'm going to create a virtual environment and for Python anywhere they use make virtual environment so the command is going to be mk virtual env and then the Python version that I'm interested in so you do double slash Python so dash dash Python and then equals and then a directory where the Python executable is in this case it's going to be user slash bin slash Python 3.5. I've created my app in 3.5. You can use 3.6 if you like. 3.4 works as well. I'm not sure if they support anything before 3.4, but you probably will be developing your app in at least 3.4. So after I supply the path for Python 3.5, I'll give the environment a name. I'll call this my env. And once it gets created, it's automatically going to start up the virtual environment for me. So I don't have to do it myself. And I'll just wait a moment for that speed done. And it's almost done. Just installing setup tools, pip and wheel. And the next thing I'll do is I'm going to install Django on this virtual environment. So it should be just about done now. It, it's really drawing out the end of this process. Okay, so now it's done. So we see on the left-hand side how it says my env inside of the parentheses. So that means that the virtual environment is active, which is exactly what I want. And because the virtual environment is active, I can go ahead and install Django. So pip install Django. And it will install Django for me. And if you have any requirements in your Django app, like you have a requirements.txt file in the root of your project directory, then you can CD over to that project directory and then run pip install dash r requirements.txt to load all the other requirements that are necessary for your particular project. In my case, the to-do app only depends on Django and Django's dependencies. So I won't have to do that, but just know that if you do want to install the extra requirements, then you just go into the next directory. I'm not in it right now, I'm in the home directory, but you just CD into your project directory, and then you can go ahead and install all the requirements that you need for your app. 
So this is installing, and while it does that, I'm going to open up a new window. So it's nice to keep multiple windows open when you're doing this for the first time because you're going to need some information. So I'll just open up a new window. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new web app. So I'm going to go to the web tab, click it, and hit add new web app. My account doesn't support custom domain names, so I'll just use the built-in one, which is myname.pythonanywhere.com. Of course, if you pay, and I believe the cheapest plan is like five bucks a month, then you can use a custom domain if you would like, but I'll be using the free one. So just click next here. And then when it says select a Python web framework, you want to select manual configuration. I mean, you could select Django, but I think manual configuration is a little easier to handle. And then click the version of Python that you are using. In my case, I'm using Python 3.5. That's the one I use for my virtual environment. After you click that, it's gonna go ahead and create the virtual environment for you. And as we can see, it's still installing Django over here on the left-hand side. So this is a bit slow. This is a lot slower than usual, by the way. This isn't typical. So I don't want you to think that Python anywhere is slow because it definitely isn't. So now that I have my web app created, I have this new screen that has a bunch of different information. And the important thing for me to start is setting the virtual environment. So Pick the name that you use when you were creating it here in Bash. So for me, I use my ENV, and you can just type that directly in here. So my ENV, and when you click the check mark, it will find the virtual environment for you. So you don't have to specify the entire path. Next thing you want to do is you want to edit this file called the WSGI configuration file. So I'll do that, and actually to make this a little more clear, I'm gonna open this file in a new window. So you see Python Anywhere has this code editor that you can use to modify any text files in your projects. So this text file that I'm modifying is the configuration file for the server. So what they want you to do is remove everything that is not for your particular framework. So if you look at the comments here, we see custom WSGI, we see Django, we see Flask, and that's it. So remove everything that is not Django. So I'll remove Flask, and then above Django, I'll remove Django, and I'll go up to the virtual ENV here. Keep the code that is already commented or not commented out, so don't modify that but you can then, well, actually you can. I'm thinking of something different. So you can remove the hello world example as well. And then you're left with the Django code. So here in the Django code, you want to remove the comments. Pretty much everything that has one hash in front of it, you can remove. So let me just go through that really quick. Remove it, just one hash. And don't forget the imports at the top. And then what you want to do is you want to modify two things. First, you want to modify the path, which is here. That's going to be the path that your project is in. So I see here in my bash that it's done installing. So if I ls here, I see a readme and Django to do app. If I cd into Django to do app, this is my project directory. So ls here. And if I just print the working directory, I see it's home slash Anthony Herbert slash Django to do app. So that is the path that I'm interested in adding. So I'll just copy that and I'll go over here to line 28, the path, and I'll simply update the path with the path of my project. And then I need to update the settings module. So the settings module needs to be the name of your project that you use in Django. So, you know, Django start project something. That something is going to be what you need to know. So in my particular case, I called my project, my project. So I will update the settings module to be my project dot settings. So I can go ahead and save that because those were the only two things I needed to modify. And since I'm done with this file, I can close it out. So now with all that done, I want to click the reload button here, which will reload my app. And once it's done reloading, I'm going to click on the link and we will see what happens. Okay, so now I'll open it up. 
and I get this screen telling me that the host is disallowed at slash. So this means I need to add my hosts to the allowed hosts list in my settings.py pile. So I'll just copy this URL here. So anthonyherbert.pythonanywhere.com and I'll go to the files and I will find the settings.py file. Of course, you can update this in your code directly and then push it to GitHub and then pull it to Python Anywhere, but I'll just modify the code through the text editor in Python Anywhere because that's a little easier. So I'll go to my project and then I'll go to settings. And then for allowed hosts, you just put the string with the domain. So if you had a custom domain, then you would add that here. And you can get rid of all the HTTP stuff or trailing slash. Just put your username dot python anywhere dot com. So save this. And I'll actually need this file again in a moment. So I'll open up a new tab. I'll go back to web and I will restart the server. Okay, so now that the server has restarted, let's see if I can see my app now. I refresh, and now I see my to-do app, but obviously the styles aren't there. So what I need to do now is tell Python Anywhere how to handle my static files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update my settings.py file. So I'll go back here, which I already have open, and at the bottom, I'll take note of the static URL. So just note that it's slash static slash. And I'm going to add a static root. So static underscore root configuration value. And inside of this value, I'm going to supply the path that I want my static files to be put in. So for me, I'll say home slash Anthony Herbert slash Django to do app slash static. So the first part of this is the directory that I already have and the slash static is this new directory that I want created to hold all my static files. So I'll go ahead and save this. And then I'll go over to my bash console again and I'll make sure I'm in the right directory. Okay, so I see the manage.py. I'm going to run a single command. Python manage.py collect static. And what this is going to do is it's going to take all the static files that I have for my project and then it's going to put them in the static directory. So this static directory here is brand new because it was just created after I used collect static. So now I'm done with the bash, so I'll close this out. And I'm also done with the settings.py file, so I'll close that out as well. And I'll go back to my web app setup. So the very last thing I need to do is I need to go down here to static files Enter the URL. So the URL is that first part that we saw where it said static. So slash static slash. And then the directory is going to be the directory that I supplied for the static root. And in my case, it was slash home, Anthony Herbert, Django, to do app slash static. Okay, so once all of that is done, I can reload my app once more. And then at this point, everything should be working correctly. So if I refresh this, I see my styles are here and my app looks like it is supposed to look. So pretty simple to deploy app to Python Anywhere. Obviously you can do more with Python Anywhere. Um, you'll probably spend a lot of time in the log files, but that's just the basics of getting your app deployed to Python Anywhere. So like I said, with Python Anywhere, it's very simple to set up an app, and I think this is the first option you should use when you are deploying an app to a server, unless you have a really good reason to use another service. But I find that people try to overcomplicate things. They want to go straight to like a, a custom server on AWS when their web app isn't going to get that much traffic, and they don't need to bother with managing the server or anything like that when they can use a service like Python anywhere that takes care of that for you. So just make sure you use the tool that is appropriate for your situation and it will save you a lot of time when you are working on your app and sharing your app with other people. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions about using Python anywhere, of course, you can leave a comment down below and I will answer it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.